No two go-to-market strategies are the same. Now look, they may follow the same core principles on how to grow a SaaS company, but the actual implementation of it can be wildly different. So I thought it would be really interesting to look at three companies in the same category and look at exactly how they implemented their go-to-market strategies. And so I wondered what would make for like three really great companies that would be apples to apples comparison. And it turns out because I started in the sales engagement space, I really deeply studied the marketing automation space. And so in this episode, I'm gonna dig into the go-to-market strategy that three great SaaS companies followed, Marketo, HubSpot, and Eloqua. And we're gonna compare exactly how they went to market, how they differentiated from each other. And when you actually watch till the end of this episode, I'm gonna walk you through not just the three ways that they differentiated in their go-to-market strategy to win and compete with each other, you're also gonna see three examples of these amazing companies that I probably know way too much about because I studied them for so long and how they actually built their go-to-market strategy. And when you follow all of this, you will be able to accelerate the growth of your SaaS business. Intro. everybody welcome to unstoppable i'm tk and on this channel i help SaaS founders like you grow your SaaS business faster with an unstoppable strategy now if you're new to this channel welcome be sure to hit the subscribe button and that bell icon and here's why I drop an episode every single Sunday with actionable strategies on how to grow your SaaS business faster. So when you hit the subscribe button and that bell icon, you will be notified every single time I drop an episode with the TK energy. Now, if you're already part of this channel, if you're part of this community, if you're part of my coaching programs, my people, welcome back. Now, I remember when I first started ToutApp, that was my last SaaS company and I started it back in 2011. And that was my last SaaS company that I grew and then I sold it. Now, when I was starting out, Baby TK didn't know much about growing SaaS companies. I was only 28 at the time. And so I deeply studied the marketing automation space. Two reasons. One, it had three companies that had very prolific founders that were sharing their story. And two, we were in the sales engagement space. ToutApp was one of the pioneers in the sales engagement space. And so there were a lot of comparisons between between those two categories. And my thesis was that the sales engagement space would grow up to be just like the marketing automation space. And so there would be a lot of lessons learned because success leaves clues from the marketing automation space. Lo and behold, fast forward. At one point, HubSpot actually tried to buy ToutApp when we were at about a million ARR. I became friends with the founder of Eloqua, Mark Organ. I also, well, I sold ToutApp to Marketo, the third company in the marketing automation space. And so I joined Marketo and I was SVP of strategy and we did a two year transformation and we sold it to Adobe for $4.75 billion. And so all of a sudden I found myself studying the marketing automation space and also being in it and also pioneering the sales engagement space. So incredible number sequence of events, which gives me probably an unfair view into marketing automation and those companies. Not a perfect view because I wasn't the founder of the marketing automation space. I could never claim to be that. However, I got the outside view and then the inside view and the Jason view and then the sales engagement view. And so what I wanted to do in this episode was walk you through the three wildly different go-to-market strategies that each of these three companies followed, what you can learn from them, and what are the three principles they leverage in their go-to-market strategies to differentiate from each other in a very crowded space. So if you're excited to dig in, go ahead and smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. And let's go to principle number one. Okay, so the first thing that you have to know about how these three companies operated was they actually played in relatively different parts of the market. And this is one of the biggest things I wanna highlight in this example of these three companies. So we're gonna look at Marketo, uh, we're gonna look at Eloqua, and we're gonna look at HubSpot. Now there is a fourth company that we kind of studied, Pardot, but in this case, I want to keep it to three. I don't want to make it overly complicated. Marketo and Eloqua and HubSpot played in wildly different market segments. That's one of the biggest things that was different about their go-to-market strategies, even though they were in the marketing automation space. So they were in the marketing automation space. They were not founded at the same time. In fact, Marketo came later and almost slowed down Eloqua's IPO, from what I hear. HubSpot was also coming into the game at a little bit later over time. But the big thing to understand is for principle number one, they followed a very different ICP and market segmentation. Let me explain. Let me after I write this out. So Whenever you're thinking about your go-to-market strategy, your ICP and your market segmentation is one of the biggest decisions, biggest strategic decisions you make. So you can go after the SMB market, you can go after the mid market, or you can go after the enterprise. And similar to that, depending on which market you're going after, 
you're pretty much gonna charge a very different amount. Your deal sizes are gonna be different and your sales motion is going to be different. And so essentially, even in a space that can be seemingly very competitive, like if you ever went to Dreamforce, literally it was the Marketo booth and the Pardot booth and the Eloqua booth, they were all right there. And I don't know if HubSpot was ever there because they weren't that close with Salesforce, but they were all right there. It was a very competitive space and customers would literally go to their booth and the booth and that booth and then decide which one they were gonna go to. But in reality, the biggest difference they had in their go-to-market strategy was they had wildly different market segmentations. And the way it played out, and I don't know if this was truly intentional or just the market sorted itself out, was HubSpot played originally, now it's very different, and we'll talk about that in the third principle if you stick around till the end, HubSpot started right over here, and Marketo was right square in the mid-market. And Eloqua was right square uh, in the enterprise. And that's generally how it evolved. And so even though these companies were in the same category, their software did very similar things, in reality, they were actually selling to very different customers. And immediately when a customer actually went in and got a feel for the product and looked at the sales process and looked at the price tag, immediately they almost self-selected into, oh, we are a five-person company, we're not gonna spend $200,000 on Eloqua. Or we're a five-person company, we're not gonna spend $40,000 on Marketo. We are a five-person company and we barely have marketing so we're gonna go at HubSpot and just pay a monthly fee and get started over there. So you can start to see how the ICP and the market segmentation really differentiated these three companies, even though they were in the same space. And this is something that you can think about as you're building out your go-to-market strategy. This is why when I work with founders, we talk deeply about what's your ICP. Everyone thinks they have an ICP, but until they go through my process, they're like, oh, we did not have an ICP. And so it forces you to make some strategic decisions, market segmentation being one of them. And this is one of the big reasons these companies didn't just kill each other and implode, the space got bigger because naturally their strengths played to specific parts of the market. And based on that, the overall space grew, every company grew, and they all had outsized returns. So with that out of the way, the second principle that these companies did, and this is something that I really learned from, is every single one of these companies had a manifesto. Uh, let me explain. And so if you've been watching my channel for a while, if you're part of my coaching program, then you know what a manifesto. Manifesto is essentially your differentiated message. It's your strategic narrative. It's the way you differentiate yourself in a very crowded market. And every SaaS market is very crowded right now, whether you like it or not. These companies, this is where I kind of like learned the craft because these companies did this really well. Each of these companies had a very different strategic message. And this allowed them to really make a difference in their marketing and how they position themselves. And that way these customers would almost self-select. Now, let me explain how it played out in this example. The way it played out was HubSpot, their big message and their book and their founders talking about everything, their conference was called Inbound. And Inbound was this entire idea of look, you need a website, you need a blog, you need to do SEO, and back then SEO was way easier because there weren't as many websites as there is now. And what you need to do is get yourself out on the internet so people find you and they come inbound to you. And then you can nurture them through an email sequence through our marketing automation and drive sales. So that's what marketing did, and then sales would close the deals. That is what HubSpot's entire message was. And because they were selling into the SMB, if you just think about it, this all plays onto each other. They were selling the SMB, smaller marketing, budgets, they barely have a website, their tool, their platform, not only did the email automation, they also gave you a blog and a website. And they were saying, look, you don't have to spend a whole lot of marketing budget in all these different campaigns and programs, just do inbound, Get, let them come to you, teach the competition. And so it fit really well into this SMB space. And that was their narrative. And, that, and they wrote the book on that, they had the conference on that, and they just made it a religion. And then because of that, it further solidified their segmentation in the market. Similarly, Marketo had this other strategic narrative. Again, same category, but they had a strategic narrative of seat at the revenue table. And this wasn't exactly what they called it, but this was like the core mantra that drove everything, right? Like I was at Mark Marketing Nation, even before we ever got acquired, I was like hacking into that and understanding what they were doing and met John Miller and we talked to each other and like, they were all about, hey, you're a marketer and you're spending all this money, but you're not at the revenue table. You're not able to say what this money is yielding. 
And what you need to be able to do is say, look, this is how much revenue and pipeline we generated. And that's why you need a marketing automation platform. So you can see already, this already speaks to a different segment of the market. Their narrative spoke to that, their ICP. And they said, look, VP of marketing or VP of demand gen, you are not getting the credit you deserve. Sales is taking all the credit. You're not at the revenue table. What you need to do is use our platform. We'll tell you exactly how much pipeline you generated, what you gave to sales, how you nurtured them. And then you will get a seat at the revenue table because you can say, here, give me more budget. I'll be able to generate more pipeline and I'll own a number. And all of a sudden you are respected. And that was their message. This is why 5,000 people show up to Marketing Nation and get so crazy because they were able to use this platform to prove that they were driving impact to the revenue. They got a seat at the revenue table. And that was their narrative. And this is so powerful because if you think about it underneath it, and yeah, these products evolved in different ways, but underneath it, it was still nurture sequences. It was lead generation forms. It was a website. The features were the same, but their narrative and their manifesto was wildly different. And it spoke to their market segment and actually attracted them in a wildly different way. And similarly with Eloqua, they were going into the much bigger enterprise. And so they were talking about how do you run multiple campaigns? They were talking about how do you actually think about orchestrating demand? They were again, up leveling a bit more on exactly the same features, but speaking in a different way so they could go sell into the enterprise. Now there were times, right? Like this wasn't set in stone. Marketo would constantly be pushing into the enterprise. Eloqua would try to go mid market but they both had their sweet spots. And that was part delivered by their message, part delivered by their DNA, part delivered because Eloqua had more time to go more off market. They started up market. There were these natural forces that were at play, but at the same time, basically the way they had their manifesto and their strategic message, the way they positioned themselves and differentiated themselves naturally played to the market that they wanted to win. And that was incredibly powerful. So same category, three different companies and three different implementations of their go-to-market strategy and their examples. Are you starting to see the power in this? Now, there's a third one that really made a big difference here. But before I go into that, let me just pause here for a second. What I wanted to do in this was take three companies that are in the same category and start to highlight that even though the principles of go-to-market may be the same, depending how you wanna play, how you wanna take part in the chessboard, what moves you wanna make, and how you wanna differentiate and win, you can have wildly different go-to-market strategies. And when you are purposeful and intentional about that, then you are able to win, and the entire space is about able to win, and SaaS is so big that everyone can win. If you're starting to see the power in that, can I just get a yes in the comments below? And also, smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. It really likes it when you do that. Also, if you're in this stage where you really need to revamp your go-to-market strategy so you can accelerate growth, you can differentiate from the competition. I encourage you to check out my SaaS go-to-market coaching program. Inside of this program, I actually work with you to revamp your go-to-market strategy, define it, be intentional about it, go to a well-defined go-to-market strategy, and then execute on it. I'll tell you more about it at the end of this video, but let's now go to principle number three, which is super important for you to know. The third principle that you need to know that each one of these three companies actually applied is up-leveling. And this is one that we don't always talk about on this channel if you've been a long time viewer because it doesn't always come up, but it come, this is very relevant because these guys did it really, really well. The thing that a lot of early stage founders don't realize is when we're working on your ICP or we're defining your manifesto, it is not written in stone. It's written in a Google Doc or Google Slides, which means that it is going to evolve. And as time passes and your TAM gets bigger and the brand gets known and as your company gets bigger and as you raise more funding or get more profitability, you are going to iterate on all of these things. And this is equally true for these three companies in their go-to-market strategies. What ended up happening is over time, every single one of these companies up-leveled. Eloqua got bought by Oracle. Uh, and what that forced them to do was, I don't even know if you can buy Eloqua right now unless you are an Oracle customer and 40 salespeople come into your office and they're gonna sell you 50 things and one of them is Eloqua. And so in a way, they up-leveled into this super big enterprise, like the super enterprise market, which Oracle customers are. And I think that's just where they played. And the reason I know this really well is by the time Oracle was running Eloqua, Vista took over Marketo, and then Marketo bought my company, Taudap. 
And when I went in there, I joined the executive team and we were doing this two year transformation. And in that moment, it was like, what's the value creation thesis? Vista always creates a value creation thesis when they buy a company. It's like, we're gonna go out market. We're gonna go into the enterprise and win. Why? Because Eloqua just left that. They're just in over here, no man's land. Just, we don't even know if Eloqua is participating in the market or selling actively. So we're gonna keep this mid market stronghold, but we're gonna go up over here and maybe even over here and start to take over that set of the market. And the way Marketo did this very effectively, so effectively that we not only got EBITDA going, but in two years, we were able to sell the company for $4.75 billion. And I think Vista bought it for like 1.2 billion or something like that. The reason we were able to do that was because we up-leveled our go-to-market strategy. We looked at the ICP, we up-leveled that. And yes, even at a 450 million euro company, you do an ICP exercise. And we did that and made a huge difference. We up-leveled our strategic messaging. Instead of marketing automation, we start talking about engagement. And because of that, we were able to rip away customers from Eloqua. We were able to actually go up level. We hired Jill Rowley, who was like the Elo queen, and she became part of Team Marketo, and she helped us go after more Eloqua customers, which was also incredible. And what that allowed us to do was use this third principle, was up level to continue to evolve in the market. And mind you, Marketo wasn't the only one that did that. HubSpot then started to go up level as well into the mid-market and the enterprise. And this was really, really cool to watch because when we were at Marketo, one of the things I had to do was I had to go move to Europe to go be the interim managing director of Europe because the guy left. So it was like a 24 hour thing. They're like, you need to go there. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go there and move to London. And one of the things I, I saw as I was running that organization was HubSpot was in a lot of enterprise deals in Europe, but not in North America. Little by little, they also up-leveled in different parts of the world, their go-to-market strategy to compete in these other stages as their platform got better and better. And while HubSpot followed primarily a very quick sales-driven model or a self-service model, now they up-leveled into a PLG plus hybrid model where you can pretty much sign up for HubSpot and use the product and then you can talk to sales and get a bigger bigger deal done or a yearly deal done when the time is right. So they follow a very hybrid model and they're able to play in different, different segments of the market over time, they've up-leveled. Similarly, Marketo has gone over here and now they're part of Adobe, right? And so again, they're slowly moving over here to the enterprise where Adobe primarily sells and maybe they'll see the mid-market, there's like Active Campaign, which, uh, which is another company or Pardot, uh, that can maybe take over the mid market. And so the third principle is you can always up level as you get bigger. And these companies have throughout their life cycle through multiple owners. HubSpot's the only one that still has original founders run by the original founders. Their CEO just changed. Brian Halligan just uh, stepped down as CEO, but still Dharmesh is well in it, right? As the biggest stakeholder, even through all those changes, they're still playing in the space. Marketing automation is stronger than ever and they have up level. So those are the three key principles and examples that I really wanted to walk you through. Hopefully I didn't nerd out on this too much because I find this stuff super fascinating and it's very applicable when you are growing your go-to-market and establishing go-to-market strategy and growing your company. So to recap, principle number one is you wanna make sure you have an ICP and a market segmentation. You really do the exercise for that effectively. And that will help you even in a competitive market, find a spot in the market where you can compete and differentiate. Once you've done that, the second principle is you wanna have a clear strategic message that really differentiates you from the rest of the players in the space, which these three companies did beautifully, right? They had a different differentiated message depending on the segment of the market they were going after, and that's what allowed all of them to thrive and the space to thrive, which is super important. And then as you evolve, always up level. If you're a 10 million ARR, I work with a lot of companies with CEOs that are 10 million ARR and their growth stalled because they didn't up level appropriately. And so that's something you will consistently wanna do. If you're sub three million ARR, the big things to knock down is your ICP and a market segmentation, your manifesto, and then run your plays effectively. But as you start to grow, then you'll wanna up level. And those are the three principles you absolutely need to know. And now you know what the three most important principles are for your go-to-market strategy. But what you may not know is how do you actually flesh out your ICP? How do you actually craft your differentiated strategic message? How do you actually execute on the key channels that generates demand for your B2B SaaS company? This is why I created my SaaS go-to-market coaching program. Inside of my coaching program, I work with you to flesh out your proper scalable go-to-market strategy, and then I coach you on how to actually execute on it. So to learn more about that, we are accepting more founders into the program now. So to learn more about that, just go to tkcater.com slash GTM. 
tkcater.com slash GTM. And when you go to that link, you'll get all the details about the program. You'll see some success stories of other founders that have seen so much success from the program. It's an incredible program. And then if you're interested in working with me to build a scalable go-to-market machine, to revamp your go-to-market strategy, to work on these pieces that we've talked about, then you can actually fill out a little form so you can apply to join. The reason we do this is we want to make sure that we're the right fit. And so you can actually get on a call and then on the call, we'll review exactly where you are and see if we can help. So either way, we've optimized this process so I can focus on the people that are in the program and they're the right fit and we get you incredible success for your go-to-market strategy. Lastly, if you got value from this video, please smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. It really likes it when you do that. Also, I drop an episode every single Sunday with actionable strategies on how to scale your SaaS business from the front lines. This is not theory. I didn't just have like a three month startup. I like, I learned this stuff the hard way over 15 years in SaaS. And that's why I love bringing these videos to you. So you don't make the same mistakes that I did. And maybe you'll make some new mistakes and you'll learn and you'll pay it forward as well. So be sure to hit the subscribe button and that bell icon that way you'll get notified every single time I drop an episode. If you have a fellow founder, a team member, if you're part of a Slack group or WhatsApp group, that would get value from this episode and this channel, please share it with them. It'll just mean the world to us. My team and I put a lot of love into these videos. And lastly, remember, everyone needs a strategy for their life and their business. When you are with us, yours is gonna be unstoppable. I'm TK, and I'll see you in the next episode or in the Go To Market program.